Okay, great. So welcome everyone. My name is Michael Fiedler. I'm a software developer with IBM Rational. Um, I'm also a committer on the Eclipse Leo project, which provides OSLC SDKs and samples and tools. Um, I'm also the co-lead for the uh, OSLC automation work group. The topic of today's session is um, accessing, navigating, and debugging OSLC and IBM Rational Jazz services uh, using a browser. My goal is to provide some techniques that you can use to start experimenting with OSLC, start navigating your way through OSLC implementations, playing around with them without having to, you know, go out and write code. That's sort of been a barrier of entry for some folks to, you know, uh, playing around with OSLC, investigating OSLC is they didn't want to have to go write Java code or whatever, whatever sort of code to do it. So the, you know, we'll show you some techniques today using, just using a browser. As Sean mentioned, we'll be breaking the session up into four parts so that we can post shorter videos of the session and not make folks sit through a full hour of listening to me. So I'll be pausing at each section, and that's where we're going to break the video up. So thanks for your patience there. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and get started here. The um, first thing I want to talk about are um, browser plugins for REST services. So I think you know, folks that have some familiarity with OSLC um, understand that it's one of the underpinnings of it is HTTP RESTful services. That's how you know all service calls get made in OSLC. So in order to be able to start playing around with OSLC, we need some um, browser plugins that let us make REST calls. So a couple of the ones that I've used, I've got listed up here on this chart. Um, Firefox REST client is a good one. There's a couple for Chrome, Advanced REST client, and another one called Postman. Um, I searched around for IE a little bit. I didn't, you know, none hit me right away. So, um, you know, I'll, I would recommend any of these that I have listed up here on the screen. Um, in today's session, I'm going to be using the Chrome Advanced REST client. <coughs> so I'll just switch over to my browser real quick here. We can see what it looks like. So it's a plugin for Chrome. And when it loads, it has a place for you to put the URL where you're going to make your REST call, the type of method, and then you can start adding um, headers and things like that uh, to make your REST calls. So it's a pretty, pretty simple plugin to use. Um, I would recommend any of those ones that I have listed here. Um, some additional tools that we're going to be using today, let me talk about them. Um, later on in the presentation, I'm going to be talking about uh, OAuth uh, authentication, how we can use our browser to do, you know, do some experimentation and investigation of OAuth. So there is, I've got all these listed in the presentation, we'll make the slides available, but uh, Netflix has a OAuth test tool that they make available on the web where you can plug in different OAuth parameters and it will generate URL calls for you. So I'll be using that a little bit later in the presentation. Um, I'm also going to be using a URL encoder decoder tool uh, just to do some you know, simple encoding and decoding. <coughs> So those are the, the three main tools that I'm going to be using uh, during this presentation today. Um, so th the second thing before I actually get started with the meat of this presentation that I wanted to talk about is um, OSLC versus Jazz uh, service access. So the bulk of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today is um, is, OSL is directly OSLC, which is you know provides RESTful web services for application and lifecycle integrations. Um, it provides you know, some overall resources like the OSLC catalog, OSLC service provider documents, and then provides some you know, resources specific to certain domains, change management, uh, quality management requirements. We've got some performance management stuff going on. Um, provides its operations using HTTP methods. And there's some standard headers that are associated with, you know, anytime you're dealing with OSLC, some standard headers that we'll be using today. <clears throat> and uh, the authentication, if you look in the OSLC core spec, it'll, it talks about, you know, you can use basically any kind of authentication that you want. OAuth, form, and basic authentication are mentioned. And we'll talk a little bit later in this presentation a good bit about um, authentication. But the, the OSLC implementation that I'm going to be using today are the IBM Rational Jazz servers. Um, a lot of folks have expressed interest in, you know, seeing demos of these browser interactions with some of the, the IBM Rational Jazz servers. So I'll try to be careful today to call out when I'm talking about things that are, you know, OSLC, generic OSLC things that should um, apply to any OSLC provider. 
But there's going to be cases today when I'm also talking about things that you know, might be specific to these IBM Rational Jazz implementations of OSLC. So there's you know, additional protocols and patterns that we're going to talk about a little later in the, <coughs> the presentation that are sort of specific to Jazz. So I'll, I'll try to be as careful as I can about you know, calling out those differences. I think the one that you know, people that have some familiarity with the, the Rational products are familiar with are the root services protocol. So we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So that's sort of my upfront material before we you know, dive into this. So I'm going to go through a couple of different scenarios today. Um, the first set of scenarios I want to talk about are around service discovery. So how do I, I'm working with an OSLC implementation. How do I discover what services it provides? And you know what URLs I need to invoke in order to create things, in order to query things. So we'll talk a, um, a little bit about service discovery. Then we'll talk about some you know common operations that we want to do. We want to be able to query artifacts. We want to be able to create them. We want to be able to update them. So we'll talk about how we can do that uh, from a browser plugin. Um, then we'll get a little bit more into some of the Jazz specific things. Talk a little bit about root services for the Jazz products. Uh, what it provides, and what the um, you know what the corresponding or corollary thing for other OSLC implementations might be, and then we're also going to talk about um, OAuth. Uh, quite a few people have expressed an interest to learn more about OAuth. You know what exactly is involved in what we call the OAuth dance. You know that application, uh, an application consuming services that are protected by OAuth. What, what does it have to do in order to get um, access to those protected resources? So I'll uh, take us through a couple scenarios where we actually do that in the browser. And uh, just a caution that you know th th there is going to be a lot of you know XML output here. You know normally you're doing these types of things that I'm going to be doing in the browser, you know from an application. So the the standard representations that we have for OSLC resources are, you know, RDF XML or JSON are the you know most common ones. So you know those are intended to be consumed by by programs. So I'll do my best to highlight on my screen, uh, you know, what some of these, you know, what the output is, the important parts of the output. But it is a little bit geeky. There is going to be some XML involved here. <coughs> 